everyone, I am Rebecca from Cheminets, and I'm here today with this stunning multi-nep yarn from Wool to Die For. This is a stunning yarn base that is 85% superwash merino wool, 15% Donegal neps. But unlike a traditional black, brown, and cream nep that you might see in tweed yarns, our neps here are blue, green, pink, and yellow. And since the neps are made out of an acrylic, they can't be dyed with acid dyes, which means that when we dye this yarn, we'll get these fun, colorful specks on our colorway. In order to get the neps to be in the yarn, there are some very thin strands of this that go throughout the yarn that, in my experience, has made it feel kind of heathered in the past which also means that if I was going to dye this at a similar depth of shade to, say, a superwash merino nylon yarn, this would not feel nearly as dark because it has something lighter in there to begin with. So I want to play around with the colorway and see if I can get this color to be a little bit dark. We'll really have to see. I really like the dark purple and black notes that I got on this colorway here, which is that 75, it's Nitpick Stroll, 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. This yarn is from another video, but I love the subtle variation I got with the purple and black, and I'm curious if I can achieve something that feels like this depth, but on this yarn base or not. And so to do that, I'm gonna try to increase the total amount of dye that I used in that other video. You know, I just went and looked I have never done something super saturated on this yarn base. I have done super saturated on Wool to Dye For's yarn base that has white naps and found that things weren't quite as dark, but that's a whole different thing anyway. So I'm even more excited to see how this is going to turn out. <laughs> now this video is not sponsored in any way from Wool to Dye For. I'm not an affiliate. I have no financial stakes there. I am just very excited to play around with this base again because it's really, really fun. And the only other ways, well, I'll chat more as we go and start pre-soaking this. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is add on some zip ties onto our yarn. These are some that I'm pretty sure will bleed, um, except that we're gonna be over dyeing this a dark color, so therefore I don't care if we end up with a hint of some green on our yarn. And as I fill the basin with just some cool tap water, I want to pre-soak the yarn for at least 30 minutes so we can get good coverage of our color on the yarn. The reason why I'm so excited about this yarn base is that in order to get these multicolored pops of color on yarn, otherwise you would need to use some teeny tiny resists, which I have achieved in the past by using thread to tie off a couple strands at a time onto the yarn. Now, this is extraordinarily labor intensive. And so if it's worth it to you, it's worth it to you. But having these neps in the yarn is just exciting and fun. And again, this isn't sponsored, but there is a neon fluorescent nep base that is brand new that I am very excited to dye up. So. I figured that we'll play with this and see what we think about how these pop on our purple and black colorway. I can't believe I haven't dyed this a dark color before. Or if I have, it's not something I listed individually because sometimes I check colorways I've done in the past by going through my sold out listings in the Chemnitz Creation Sensi Shop. But anyway, I pre-soaked the yarn for about 30 minutes. I put on my Deluxe Rubber Respirator Mask, Safety Glasses, and Gloves to measure out our dyes. The two colors we are going to use today are Dharma Acid Dyes Royal Purple and True Black. Now, I decided I wanted to go for approximately a 1.5% depth of shade, which means that for each 100 grams of yarn that we were going to be dyeing, I would have 1.5 grams of dye total. However, I do plan to add the black onto the yarn in a not all over fashion, whereas the purple will be a little bit more all over. So the actual depth of shade is gonna vary across the yarn, but I measured out 2.25 grams of the Royal Purple dye and 0.75 grams of the True Black. And then I dissolved the dye in hot tap water, not worrying about the final volume very much because I will add all the purple dye to my dye kettle. And then the black, maybe we'll pour on as is, maybe we'll dilute it some, I haven't decided. 
In my dye pot, I have 16 cups of water. And I'm gonna start heating things up, but we're still very much cool. And now I'm gonna come over with the royal purple dye. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but I finished up one container of dye and had to go uh, open a new one, uh, a new two ounce jar. And, um, and I don't know if you could tell that the new dye powder had a different color to it than the older dye powder. So I don't wanna freak out about this, but therefore I don't know if the color is gonna be different than what I'm expecting. Cause I'd say the purple is probably half old, half new. Um, let me add four tablespoons of white vinegar. Two, three, four. My vinegar is 5% acetic acid, if you are curious. The reason why I bother pointing that out is that there was a whole disruption in the canning community at one point when supermarket vinegar changed the concentration. So that changed from 5% to 4%, and so that causes a problem when it comes to canning. Um, but for dyeing, it just might mean you need to add a little bit more. However, the vinegar I buy from Costco is still 5%. As I was walking over here, I had to swap out a zip tie because it was a little too loose, and I was afraid that the zip tie would fall off as I bring over our pre-soaked yarn that is dripping um, to get this purple all over, and ooh. This is looking nice and saturated. That's looking really good. Okay, I dunked in. It's okay if we have some unevenness to the color, but I think I'm trying to arrange it, I don't know, just in the pot a little bit. Because once we're hot and we've absorbed a lot of the purple, I suppose at that point I could rearrange the yarn if I wanted to. Uh, before we pour the black dye on. So the black may spread all over, it may not, but for now, it looks like we've got a lovely saturation here, so I am excited. Uh, I am just confused. I suppose there's a chance that I've done this in a dark purple once. Maybe it was like a, a live stream and I sold it before listing it? I don't know. Whatever it is. I think that this yarn base is so fun and pretty. So I'm gonna set a timer. I guess we'll check back in after 15 minutes because we're not hot yet, but royal purple can strike pretty quickly. So let's see where we are after a little bit. It's been 15 minutes and we are definitely hot now. Is it bad that I'm getting worried that I'm using too much dye? Oh, basically all the purple is cleared. We've got a little bit of pinks left. Okay, let's think about how we want to do this. Okay. Have it a little bit random in there. Some yarn is covering it. I think the only thing I'm gonna do is uh, fill this cup all the way with water. Stirring it up. Okay, right, let's pour this on. Trying to somewhat have it go all over. I'll get a little bit more water in here. Taking all my self-control to not stir or move things because some amount of this dye is gonna spread throughout everything, right? But there's also gonna be some areas of yarn that the black can't access, and so we'll see. <laughs> we shall see. Uh, I will say that it's hard to see that even the depths in here right now. I mean, we are certainly steamy. I'm gonna set a timer for 30 minutes. But the bigger issue is that since we have dye in the water and we have fibers in there, those colorful nuts are soaking up colorful liquid. That doesn't mean the dye is gonna stay in there. Uh, that might rinse, that should rinse out. Those shouldn't become dyed or have any color shift. It's taking all my self-control to not lift things up. Uh, I think what I do want to do, and I'll add this around the outside, two, three, four. So I doubled, I just doubled the acid that we have in here. But now I have a timer set for 30 minutes. So let's see what 
happens in that time. It's been 30 minutes. I'm going to turn off the heat. And I have to say our dye bath is looking fairly clear, which is encouraging. Ooh, see, as I remove the liquid, it's funny. I don't know if our nups will get stained at all or if we'll see things shift as we rinse it out. Because right now I'm almost seeing a little bit of muddiness, but there's a lot of steam. So let's step away. Okay, and obviously things are still quite steamy over here, but I feel like we have some really nice clarity. Because with the white naps that were cottony, those definitely took on, um, they got stained when I went dyed that with a dark color. But I think that these are gonna pop and I think it's gonna be really, really pretty. All right, I'm excited. I am going to separate the yarn a little bit just so that, that way hopefully we'll cool off a little bit faster. Um, but the color looks great. I hope it'll feel, I mean, it's wet, so it's not gonna feel this dark when it's dry. And I guess you can see from how my hand is overexposed that the color is really nice and saturated right now. But I'm hoping that it feels dark and it can feel lighter than this. I just don't want it to feel too medium toned, you know? So hopefully it doesn't bleed also. Those are the things we need to hope for. I'll set this aside to cool and then we'll wash it. We're gonna go wash this yarn. Um, and you know, I would say that we're gonna be able to see some of like the colors of the naps throughout the skein. I don't know if I'll be able to show that on camera, but it is something I believe that you can see. It's just a heathering that hopefully I'll be able to pick up on camera. But we're crossing our fingers because things are looking rather dark right now. And so far, so good. Oh goody, when I squeeze it, the colors pop more. Because yeah, there's a chance, I mean the dye wouldn't have struck, but there's a chance that as I add a little bit of dish soap that we may need to rinse some things out of those nets. It's like when you dye a wool cotton blend, sometimes it just needs a lot of rinsing to get everything out of there. I mean, I'm definitely having deja vu with the deep purple on this face, but I don't know. I couldn't find a video. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add a tiny bit more soap just in case. I did have a very big bleeder I was dealing with today. So I'm feeling nervous, but I'm really, really enjoying the saturation we have. I know it looks incredibly dark right now. Uh, if it feels this dark when it's dry, I imagine I would, if it doesn't feel this dark when it is dry, I wonder if I would try at some point to increase the amount of pigment later because I am really digging. And I don't think you guys can really even appreciate this like midnight purple. Ooh. Can you imagine if they did naps that were just like blue, green, and yellow? You can make something starry night and that would be so pretty. Oh my gosh. But anyway, we are not having any bleeding here, which is fantastic. Fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead, put this yarn through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and it's going to look lighter. But maybe I'll show you what it looks like right after the spin dryer. Okay, you see how it almost in areas feels like it's a little bit dusty? Like you can see little fibers. Those are some of the, I mean, I think it almost looks yellow from the neps. And so that's one thing that could keep it looking as dark maybe it does but certainly it looks fabulous but anyway we're still damp it'll probably look a little lighter but I figured looking at it with the same light I mean I did change the exposure but the same light <laughs> it's probably helpful see you in a couple days here is our finished yarn and I'm actually really happy with the depth of color that we got I don't know why I said actually I mean I'm very happy with the depth of color we got the nets pop so well and are still really bright. I don't think that they got muddied at all. 
from our acid dyes, unlike when I dyed the yarn with the white neps and that white cotton, I think that those nuts were, it got stained a little bit, and so I was a little bummed that that took up some of the color and didn't give us the stark contrast. Now, we used more dye because I was unsure, and the colors here definitely feel a little bit lighter because we do have some heathering in there. So I'm unsure if I really needed to shift the recipe, but I think that given that the areas that are black don't feel very black, it's good that I did increase things a little bit. Here is one of the more black areas, and on camera it might be slightly overexposed, but I think now you can see how you get almost like a little bit of heathering from the colors of the neps within the strands, and so that's why things don't feel quite as pigmented as they might feel, if we were using a wool nylon blend. But I think that I like the way that this color is a lot. I'm planning on sharing this video after the project, which was part of the point of me playing around with this and seeing about the intensity of color. Because there's a colorway that I really wanna make, and I figured I would try it on a similar but not identical base first. And so I think we're pretty good to go. But I absolutely also had on my list of things to do to dye this yarn base with a really dark color, which I still want to go darker. I want to go just black and see how much I can push this with black dye. But that's a project for another day. But look at those bright pops on this base. This would be so tricky for me to achieve this type of bright speckles on dark. Uh, and nearly impossible with the tones, and so I'm just really happy with how this all turned out. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Sometimes I arrange my content in order, and so that way you can see some of the development before I hit where I want to end up, but other times, to avoid spoilers, I film things out of order, and so things might come out after another video. <laughs> However, if you would like some sneak peeks to Chemnitz content, I suggest you go and um, join the Chemnitz Patreon. All patrons get access to the newest Die Pop PS video and some sneak peeks through the monthly newsletter. And then depending on the level of rewards you pick, there can be additional sneak peeks and advance notice of shop restocks and even shout outs and videos. You can learn more over at patreon.com slash Chemnitz and I'll have it linked down in the video description. I really love to play with unique yarn bases, and I sometimes see some with sequins and things that I think would be really fun to try to dye, and it's hard to know exactly how things might turn out, but sometimes, I don't know, it's fun to use your imagination and see what kind of possibilities you can end up with from something that is just so fun to start with. Thank you so much for watching.